What is going on today? We are reviewing the Target exclusive WWE Elite SmackDown 25th Anniversary 4-Pack of Stone Cold Steve Austin, Booker T, John Cena, and Eddie Guerrero. Now, this is a set that I was blown away by at WrestleMania 40 when I saw it on display. So nostalgic for me. The SmackDown stage inspiration going on with the oval, the SmackDown logos, the full representations of these characters just embody everything about nostalgia for me, man. This wraps it up in a nice little bow. You know, people talk about the Hogan releases and, you know, the Macho Men releases and the Ultimate Warrior releases. But for me, man, this is like right in my zone. These things were a part of my childhood and what made my childhood so special. And to have packs like this are what I love about collecting. This is incredible. I'm so excited for it. Four different iterations of characters in backstage attire. That is chef's kiss for me. I didn't ever think we'd get street fight attire. Brian Urlacher jersey, John Cena. Alcohol fueled Stone Cold, even though the shirt's not accurate. Got milk, grocery store beating the hell out of Booker T moment. Fantastic. Not to mention Eddie Guerrero over here. This might be one of the best Eddie Guerrero elites ever. Just look at him. The cheat to win shirt. I mean, damn, this is a sick set. But we gotta get into it, man. You'll see on the front of the box, you have this nice oval shape that from left to right, it goes Booker T, Stone Cold, John Cena, and Eddie Guerrero. It has their names listed down here at the bottom. On the top, it does have SmackDown. And what's great about this era is we were getting packs like this all the time from Jax. And so to see Mattel try their hand at it, give us these box sets. I love box sets like this. So getting more of these would be nice. I hope we get more at San Diego Comic-Con, which at the time you're viewing this tonight will be preview night so hopefully we'll get some good stuff tonight but you have some bio read you have the nice rivalry of austin and booker t here if you want to read the lore and the bio you can here and on the other side we have john cena and eddie guerrero and you can read that lore there if you want to you can pause it nice shot of the fist stage in the back which god is this a teaser for what's to come are they going to give us a damn crowdfund fist stage is this the is this oh my god man now i'm now i'm all in my head you know how they're giving us all these wcw figures and these ultimates and all these great things that were supposed to go with the wcw nitro stage i mean Imagine they did a damn crowdfunder for the fist stage and had all these, they did a whole Ruthless Aggression wave or, you know, early 2000s era of figures. And I know we've gotten the Ruthless Aggression wave from Walmart, but it would have to be even better than that, where they would release figures like this from that era, man. God in heaven, that'd be beautiful. But side of the packaging features their faces on it, which is so nostalgic because it reminds me of like loading screens from Shut Your Mouth or something from back in the day. For some reason, those headshots on the side of the packaging really sent me back for some reason. But nonetheless, man, we're going to crack all four of these figures out of the packaging, go through them one by one and find out what this damn SmackDown pack is all about. But I, to say I'm excited for this pack is a huge understatement, but let's shut the hell up. Let's crack all four out of the packaging. Let's find out what the hell this pack is all about. So here's the SmackDown 4 pack out of the packaging, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. At the end of the video, we are going to be ranking this set from worst to best, and it's not a perfect wave, which we'll get into, of course, but what we're going to do is do it like we typically do our reviews. I'm going to start with Booker T, go through his accessories, go to Booker T, move to Austin, move to Cena, and work our way all the way through the pack, all the way through Eddie Guerrero. And then when it's all said and done, we are going to rank this set from worst to best, and I'll give you guys my overall thoughts on this entire set. So that being said, let's shut the hell up and dive into Booker T's accessories. Did you know that today marks the beginning of San Diego Comic-Con? And that means that not only are we getting a ton of new WWE figure reveals, it means Whatnot is doing their San Diego Live event. And this event will run from July 25th through the 28th, four days of event exclusives showcasing a massive range of toys, comics, and even live artist signings exclusively on Whatnot. Now, I will be there in person at San Diego Comic Con, so I will not be doing a stream during the show itself. However, the following weekend, I will be doing a Whatnot stream to celebrate San Diego Comic Con, including giving away items that I purchased at the convention itself. This also includes giving away a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Shawn Michaels HBK Ultimate Edition. My show to celebrate San Diego Comic-Con will be taking place August 3rd at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Be sure to go to the link in the description below of this video and download Whatnot today to receive $15 off to shop during San Diego Live this weekend as well as my show coming up the following weekend on August 3rd. Be sure to be locked into the Whatnot app July 25th through the 28th so you don't miss out on the San Diego Live event that it will be taking place this weekend. But most importantly, go to the link in the description below, save my show for August 3rd, download Whatnot today, and receive that $15 off so that you will be prepared when I go live on August 3rd, 8.30 p.m. Central Time to get in on all the epic stuff we will be selling. So for Booker T's accessories, we get cloth goods and interchangeable hands, which is fine for this four-pack. And you already know I'm not going to complain. It's cloth goods, and it's a nice t-shirt we've never seen from Mattel. And I just love cloth goods because it really adds a lot to the figures. And so we do have the Tell Me You Didn't Just Say That shirt, which is great. Now, it does have the Velcro on the back, but I just, every time I read the shirt, I think of Booker T. I can, like, envision him doing it in the promos and stuff. Tell me, you didn't just say that. 
And I don't know, it just hits me every single time. Gets a pop. So I, I like that they included this. Very obscure sort of shirt. And I like it a lot, man. This is great. Dude, 2001. That's a damn. Just a time to be alive, man. Now that I think about it, we should have just gotten a Stone Cold and Booker T set. Like Elite set with a just grocery store aisle that you can beat the hell out of him in. But outside of that, we do have our mic holding hands for Booker T. Or I guess you could say, I mean, weapon wielding or mic holding. And then he comes with a pair of fists to beat the hell out of everybody. Especially in the supermarket. So getting into Booker T starting out the top of the head sculpt. I do believe this is a newer head sculpt, at least off the top of my head, because I'm pretty sure the other one came with the short dreads or the, you know, the, I know these are short dreads, but you know what I mean. They came down to maybe like right past his ear or like right at shoulder length maybe. And this is a newer haircut. This is a shorter haircut, which is more accurate. So I think they did a good job here. I do feel like the hairline may be a bit messed up, but I, I'll take it. I think this is a good Booker T head sculpt. He does have the same Jack Booker T torso. Now for this part of the review, I do like to take their cloth goods off and then we'll put them back on when we do compare comparisons and stuff but he does have his tattoos on there nice skin tone i like is this the most accurate torso for booker t probably not i think he's one of those guys you could probably use some, a different torso but it's not the biggest deal in the world i would like to see a more accurate one but i'm not gonna you know crucify it i don't think it's the worst thing i've ever seen but yeah it's probably a bit too big for him nice musculature throughout and then he just has black pants you have the black pants there and then one thing that i am sad to report is he is on pinless joints which means these pants and this articulation is going to be stiff as blue hell so yeah it's all your standard articulation but you guys know like he can kick forward pretty decent but then the knee bend on all these figures every figure in this set has pinless joints so you can already prepare yourself for that but I like this Booker T again every single figure it reminds me of the other Target exclusive four packs from back in the day the Hall of Fame sets the NWO set that one time it's a lot of guys in like promo street gear which is so cool and then for your Booker T figure comparisons we do have the Hall of Fame figure on the left I think this is the Hall of Fame elite Booker T over here and then we have the ruthless aggression Elite Booker T over there with the white jogging pants, which is a nice touch. And you could throw this shirt on this figure or these pants on. Well, I guess you can't do that, but you know what I mean. Put this shirt over here, switch some hands out, switch the arm. You can make a promo gear in the jogging pants, the white jogging pants, and the black shirt. And then I do know we had that WrestleMania 36 Elite, which I know for a fact I had from his match at WrestleMania 19, but I can't find it for whatever reason. And it really bothers me to this damn day. It makes me sick. But that is your Booker T figure comparison. So for Stone Cold Steve Austin's accessories, he actually comes with the most out of everybody maybe outside of John Cena. But we can start things off with his cloth goods, and this is actually a really underrated Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt. It's the Alcohol Fueled shirt, which is amazing graphic with the Alcohol Fueled. They don't have the Alcohol Fueled text on there, which is kind of bummy. You know, I really wish they'd put it on there. You can get a custom shirt made, but it is very stinky that he doesn't have the Alcohol Fueled on the shirt itself, but I'll take it. I like that it's unique to him and everything, and going into this Austin figure, there's actually a lot of lore there, and I'll get into that when we break down the figure itself, but I'm very happy to have a, a unique Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt, especially when Mattel doesn't give it to us very often. It's always the Austin 316 shirt, so I will always appreciate something different outside the box, and I like this. And probably the most iconic thing about this entire segment is going to be the carton of milk here. I mean, he beat the hell out of Booker T in that segment, and it's very legendary. One of my favorite wrestling moments as a kid, for sure, but the Hey Book Got Milk is so damn iconic when he comes out of the back of the damn fridge. Just legendary moment, and what kind of adds to the aura of Stone Cold Steve Austin is moments like this. But the milk carton is actually, for the half gallon of milk, is attached to his hand here. This is certainly a half gallon. This is not a full gallon, but a couple details would have worked here, but it's infused with his hand. This is actually a holding milk gallon or jug of milk hand. They've kind of experimented with this with, you know, attaching hands to objects. And that's fine with me. It's very unique, but I think I'm going to paint that red. I think that would sell it. Maybe get a decal or something. It would just really sell it, because right now it just kind of looks like he's toting a I don't know, like a pine, it looks like bleach to me, looking like this, or, I don't know, like weed killer or something, I don't know, it just doesn't look like milk to me, but I still like it a lot, it's very badass, and then he also comes with a mustard bottle, so you get a bottle of mustard, and you can throw both of these into your catering departments, I guess, you know, uh, only certain people will be able to hold this now, but, I don't know, I, I think it, I think it would have been better as a loose milk jug, but who the hell am I, man, but you also get a bottle of mustard, very nice sculpt on here, and it's very pliable and bendy, but then he also comes with mic holding hands, which are always appreciated, but then he also comes with fisted hands to beat the living hell out of people. Stomp mud holes and walking them dry. And then getting into Stone Cold Steve Austin at the top of the head sculpt. We've seen this head sculpt multiple times with the Ultimate Edition with the WrestleMania 38 figure. Multiple times over we've seen it, but it is a really good head sculpt, so I don't really hate it. You know, you could have done the pissed off one maybe, or even a new one would have been cool, but I'll take what we can get here. Now, the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso doesn't bother me, but what does bother me about Austin figures most of the time is going to be the shoulder size and the arm size. They desperately need to give this man the striated shoulders and probably bigger arms, because these are way too 
skinny for Austin, and it just kind of throws off the entire vibe of the figure. But one thing I am happy to report is that he comes with the watch, which is something that I have talked about on the channel for many years. I begged Mattel to give us more Jorts Austins with iconic t-shirts. This is one to add to the list. We know we're getting one in the Monday Night War series number four elite set. So they're adding two since I posted about that. Now, I don't know if that was already in the pipeline or it was a coincidence that, you know, I called it out or talked about it at length or ad nauseum. And then, I mean, I've talked about it for years, but then I made a specific post and I made a whole entire video dedicated to it, which you can check out. But finally getting a watch accessory for Awesome, which is another thing I begged for for years. It's massive and I didn't include it in the accessories, but having that black watch in there is just such a nice detail and it's very sculpted nice. We've seen this a couple times now. I think this is the third or fourth figure now that is coming with the watch and I hope to see that mainstay in the line. We do have the Jorts here, which are a nice color. They're lighter than that Then Now Forever set, which I like and the belt looks good. He does have his knee braces and knee pads in there and he does have his tattoo down here and the short black boots. But one thing about this figure is he's very bow-legged. He looks very bow-legged to me and he can kick forward pretty decent, but his legs are pretty stiff there and I don't know. His legs just look so weird and the formula looks weird because he has these small arms and then, you know, you contribute the full formula. The legs just look a bit bow-legged. I need to get in here and like heat these legs up and like warp them straight and I think it would work a lot better. But even on his elites in the trunks, you know, just the black trunks, he's way too small and I think that it would add a lot to his figures if they would beef him up a little bit and it really throw it over the top. But let's put the shirt on this man. And another thing that struggles with these figures is Austin always like tucked his shirts in. Not every single time, but most of the time they were tight fit and you know, it would look a lot better if the shirt had that tucked in look like this and then it was tight on his bicep and that's very hard to replicate if you're not sculpting the shirt on but the bigger arms would certainly help and then when they do the non velcro shirts it looks a lot better but let's get into some Austin figure comparisons so for your jorts figure comparisons for Austin we do have the then now forever 60th anniversary four pack elite here and they just repainted it here and gave it to us in another elite four pack which is crazy then you have the other three pack damn that's crazy there's three Austins here in jorts that all came in their own sets this was the milkomania epic moment it's three pack. This is the SmackDown 25th anniversary four pack, and this is the Then Now Forever Target exclusive four pack. So back to back four packs at Target had this shorts Austin just redone in a different way. And then at the end, we do have the Hall of Fame figure that was also Target exclusive. So three out of the four here are Target exclusive, which I think is just maddening. I know this figure set's popping up at Ollie's and stuff, but still just a crazy thing to think about. But this is the Hall of Fame Elite. I just touched it up. I switched the head sculpt. I put on some different accessories to kind of make my own makeshift Austin. But look how much better it looks when I give it the tucked in shirt look. It just just throws it over the top for me. But there are so many Austin shirts and makes they need to make in this exact mold. I just think it could be upgraded a little bit. The legs are always weird. This one, the legs were very loose and stuff, and it had pinless joints, so that's a terrible combination to have on these figures. Oh, man. These are just, it sucks because this is such a look and such an important part of my personal collection that I would love to, for them to nail. It's just not being experienced yet, but I am still glad to have an attempt at it. So that is nice to see, but I just wanted to cover all those things. Then for one more comparison, here's the two up next to each other, just so you guys can see see exactly what these look like up next to each other so you know there's the feud so if you didn't see them up next to each other now you can see and next up we have John Cena's accessories now not completely accurate as I understand because of certain copyrighted material like this football jersey here is supposed to be a Brian Urlacher or Chicago Bears jersey it doesn't have all the you know it doesn't have any orange in it it's supposed to have some orange in it and on the back it does say Cena instead of Urlacher for obvious reasons but it is velcro it would have been nice to see it in the stretchier material or the non velcro but I'll take it I think it's still cool I am going to get a custom one made for this, and this is actually a John Cena I've wanted to make for a very long time. I know this isn't the figure itself, but this is a Cena that I gotta have in the collection, obviously, for the whole goal of the Cena collection, but this is still very cool to release this, and I'm glad to have this. This is a very nice touch to the figure itself. And then we have two interchangeable head sculpts. Now, the first one is going to be this one here, and this is actually the Elite 100 head sculpt repainted slightly, and I know it looks a lot like the Elite 100, but it is painted slightly differently. There is a little bit of differences there, and it makes him look younger. I think that on that Elite 100, it made him look older, but it looks Looks good. It's a good head sculpt. Looks just like John Cena in my opinion. So this is nice and fits the era well. Wish he was pissed off. I do wish he was kind of pissed off or something, but I'll take it. And then we do have the screaming expression, which we've seen on the Ultimate Edition. And again, the hair looks very good here. They did a good job. These head sculpts are very good. Very, very good. The screaming one was always appreciated on the Ultimate Editions. And then this one looks good too for the Elite 100. And it looks better repainted, like I said before. I think it looks really good. So I'll take these. And then another head accessory is this headband that he comes with. Now the headband he was wearing in the matchup was a Nike headband, I think, which you could add the decal, but not the biggest deal. It's just he was wearing a headband, so you do have that there. And it fits the figure well, so it's good. It's a good representation of it there. Again, I wish he was pissed off here because that kind of fits the gimmick, but I'll take it. And then for his interchangeable hands, he does come with these gray gloved hands, and he was wearing Nike football gloves at the time. And the gray is fine. I think it had some black. I think it had like black and white details.
details in it, but I'll take these. And one thing I will say is I wish they gave him the AJ Styles glove mold. That way you could actually see the glove texturing, right? Like AJ Styles, just give him the mic holding AJ Styles hands and the fisted AJ Styles hands. All you'd have to do is repaint them or make them black and white. It would have been perfect. I don't, I don't know, but I'll take it. You know, it's not the biggest deal in the world and something you could customize, I guess, if you really wanted to. But I think putting Rey Mysterio or AJ Styles gloves hands in here would really sell it. But he does come with fists to beat the hell out of people. Then he also comes with mic holding hands. But again, these aren't really gloved hands. They're just meant to look like gloves because you can see they're just regular hands repainted. They're not sculpted at all. So that would have really put it over the top for me. So up next, we do have Brian Urlacher parking lot brawl street fight John Cena here. And this head sculpt again does look good and it sits well in the figure. Now they did use the Jack torso. So Booker T and John Cena using the same torso here. It is the Drew McIntyre, the Triple H, the Batista Jack torso. And it looks okay for this Cena. I don't hate it. It does have the big shoulders and the bigger arms there, which a lot of people would say to use on Austin, which I think could work. But I still think we need that medium-sized arm that we talk about all the time with guys like Kevin Owens and such. But one thing that's missing from this figure, aside from the Brian Urlacher details and the Nike logo, is he was actually wearing wristbands. He was wearing these red, white, and blue striped wristbands that they could have thrown in. If they, you know, use the Ultimate Edition, just paint those wristbands and throw them on here as removable accessories would have been a nice detail, but but certainly worth mentioning. And then he does have the jeans in here, which are pinless, as we've stated. Multiple uses of this mold here with these pants in this wave or in this four-pack, but they are dry brush nice and they look good. Now, another missed opportunity here, in my opinion, is they just repainted the regular shoe mold. How sweet would it have been if they took the Tim's mold from the Shad and JTG figures and gave him the Tim's, because he was wearing Tim's in this figure. And here is the Shad, and look at that. That would have been a really nice detail to just include because they've already done it, man. And maybe that mold's discontinued or something. I understand it. But this would have been a very sweet detail to include and really would have thrown it over the top had they included the Tim's mold on the feet. It's still nice. I still like it. But I will be fixing this up on surgery. So you can look forward to that. Now, in terms of posability, much like the rest of the figures, it's pretty solid. He can kick forward nice and everything. But the legs are stiff. I mean, your double-jointed knee is going to be super stiff. But everything else is very buttery smooth. I think you guys will enjoy that. But he, uh, yeah... The, the double jointed knees just suck with pinless legs, unfortunately. Now, for your John Cena figure comparisons, we have the four pack John Cena up next to some other fix up Doctor of Thugonomics era sort of John Cena figures in my collections. You have the Ruck Fools US Spinner over here, the Word Life 54 jersey here, and then we have the Camo You Can't See Me US Champion version. Just some different fix ups from around this era. Not the exact time frame, but from around the area there. So, you do have a nice, this is a nice Cena to include, man. I mean, you throw in the custom jersey, some different, you know, analytical things like the Tim's and the, maybe the Nike headband, Nike gloves, put the wristbands on there. We'll be cooking right there, but I still like everything about this figure in terms of just releasing it and trying their hand at it is cool enough, and I know that there are limitations, but they got a lot of the details pretty good there, outside of a few, of course. And the last figure in the set is going to be Eddie Guerrero. Now, he comes with the baseline for this wave, which is going to be cloth goods and interchangeable hands, and another one of those shirts that's very underrated. You have the Cheat to Win shirt, which looks very nice. I like the clean graphic there, and it does have the V-neck cut into the neck, which I think is nice. Sleeveless shirt, and it is Velcro, so no, no Velcro-less shirts here, but it still works. I like it a lot, and again, it is a very unique shirt, one that you wouldn't... I mean, I know people remember this shirt. It is a nice shirt and an iconic shirt in its own way, but, but I like it a lot. It's very badass. And then for interchangeable hands, he does come with the white-taped hands, which also feature the white pegs, which is nice to see. And you'll see that his skin tone is updated to more accurate Eddie Guerrero skin tone. And then what would he be if it wasn't some fist to come with Eddie Guerrero so that he can, of course, beat the hell out of everybody? And last but not least... We we have Eddie Guerrero, and this is a brand new head sculpt. He's pissed off. He's yelling. It's got like the Vicky head sculpt from the ladder match with the Rey Mysterio. But I like this haircut in here. It looks really good. I, I think they captured the likeness beautifully. It's a really good execution. And I really like the skin tone here. It's a lot more realistic for Guerrero. Loving Eddie as a kid. This is very nice. And I love that they have the Macho Man torso, which they've always used on Eddie Guerrero elites. He's got the big shoulders. He's got the big arms in there, which I think works pretty damn good there. You know, Shreddy Guerrero, as they like to call him. But he's got the tattoo over here, which is a nice detail, white wrist tape, and then he has the same jeans as everybody else, but he does have the dry brush details. So Austin, Cena, and Guerrero all coming with their own dry brush details, and all of them are different colors and different shades of denim, so that's always nice to see, but dry brushing looks good, and then he does have the black boots in there, nothing to write home, but pinless legs again, which means stiffness is all hell. Now, a lot of the same issues you saw with the rest, you're going to be able to kick forward pretty good there, and uh, he has very tight ab crunch, like ridiculous ab crunch, kind of, and he feels very tight in the waist, and butter 
very smooth everywhere else besides the double jointed knees, which we've touched on. But I am really digging this Eddie. And I think once you put the shirt on there, it you know, it's even more chef's kiss. So for your Eddie Guerrero figure comparisons, one thing you're going to notice immediately is how much bigger he looks than the rest. And that's because he is using bigger shoulders than the rest of these elites. Here's the ultimate that they call Shreddy Guerrero ultimate. Same arm size as him, but these arms, these arms, and these arms are different. As you can see, these are smaller here. And he looks a bit taller because this leg mold is a is universally used on a lot of people, even though they should probably have their own gene mold because it makes them too tall, as you guys can see here. Because these guys, all, this one, this one, and this one, and this one all share the same torso. But the pants are longer there, so that's why you see him bigger. And I think this head sculpt's a little bit oversized, possibly, which gives it that illusion, but... It's certainly worth noting. But he does look huge up next to it. At least on camera, he looks huge. But in person, it's not the biggest deal, but it's still definitely noticeable. You can definitely notice it, you know? And I think it's just going to depend on how you pose it and where you put him in your collection. But there is certainly worth noting. But we do have one more figure comparison. And we have to do father and son. So we do have father and son here. Eddie Guerrero with his long-lost son, Dominic Mysterio, to compare there. And you can see how, you know, Eddie Guerrero looks up next to Dominic to fit in your collection. But I think it's about time to rank this set from my least favorite figure to my favorite figure all things considered and this is a very tough set to rank because I like all of these figures in their own ways I like each of them individually and I know there's not a huge amount of stuff going on with them but I love them in their own ways and I really like this pack a lot I can appreciate the full pack even if somebody has to come in dead last which is what makes these rankings so hard but coming out of the bottom I went with Booker T simply put I think the hairline's a little off but also just because somebody had to come in dead last and I think I like the rest of the set better than this figure but in number three we have the Eddie Guerrero. I think what turns me off about this figure is how big it is. It reminds me of a Jax figure, and it actually is loosely based on a Jax figure. But you can see, look how tall he is, man. Booker T was 6'3". Eddie Guerrero was 5'8", right? 5'8", 5'9". Uh, he is roughly the same height, if not bigger, and it's because of his head sculpt and because of this pant mold. Definitely something that bums me out about it, and just kind of takes me out of the figure. Everything else is awesome, like the expression of the head sculpt, like the updated skin tone, like the shirt. Too big, in my opinion, so I went with that. Coming in at number two, I went with alcohol-fueled Stone Cold Steve Austin. Love a lot of things going on about the figure, but at the end of the day, I think that the formula needs serious upgrade, and not having the alcohol fueled on the shirt does kind of bum me out. But uh, just his legs, you know, like, I wanted to put it in number one. If it had a perfect formula and I didn't have warped legs and these different things going on, it would probably be number one. But at number one, it had to be none other than the GOAT himself, and that is John Cena. And say what you will about the missing details, I think that at its core, it has the most going on with it and it's my favorite wrestler of all time, and it probably is the most accurate to the source material, even though it's missing wristbands and Nike swooshes and Brian Urlacher's name on it. So I think if I had to pick one figure out of this whole wave, I'm picking the John Cena, if that makes sense. That's kind of how you can make it up there, but... That is the full breakdown of the SmackDown Elite 4-Pack to Target. It is Target exclusive, man. If you guys want that, definitely go check that out. And be sure to go to the link in the description to save the WhatNot Show. I know it's a little over a week away, but it is going to be worth it because we're going to have a lot of stuff going on there, and it should be a really fun show, man. And be sure to check out San Diego Live. That is going on on WhatNot this weekend for Comic-Con. But before we get out of here, a huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellows over there. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support, as always. Tonight is preview night of San Diego Comic-Con, or at least it may be, I, be may, I might post this on Tuesday, so maybe tomorrow. But regardless of the fact, I hope that it's enjoyable. I hope that it is a great time, and we will have to see all those things. But I'm getting the hell out, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I think this set is worth the pickup. So uh, if I didn't mention that, I think this is a great set, and I'm happy to have it. But I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you later.